Hello, I'm Christophe Mazier and uh, I'm from France. I'm 32 years old and I'm writing a PhD, a dissertation to get a PhD degree. So between 1999 and 2005, I did my academic studies uh, at the Chinese Studies Department uh, of the University of Provence in France. And I lived in Taiwan for two years between, uh, 19, between 2001 and 2003. Um, then I did a master's degree uh, for which I wrote a dissertation about the contemporary written literature of Taiwan Aborigines. In 2010, uh, I've decided to continue my research in this field uh, by starting a PhD thesis in the same university. Despite the fact that there were already uh, some indigenous writers uh, like uh, Gawishan or Baliwakes, uh, who were mainly song writers under the Japanese colonization, a true uh, indigenous written literature in Mandarin uh, has started to appear around the lifting of the martial law at the end of the 80s. In 2003, an anthology devoted to the indigenous written creations in Mandarin was published. It brought together the most representative indigenous writers and the text. Um, these texts often take the form of original fictions, traditional myths and legends, which are retranscribed um, or both conjugated. The dissertation I wrote for my master's degree uh, was a work of synthesis about all these writers and the texts. research uh, has already been done uh, in this field in Taiwan. But there is almost nothing in Western countries except a few works in English. By attending uh, some conferences uh, about Taiwan uh, in Western countries, uh, I realized that uh, most of the people were interested in the substance of this text. So I've decided to shed light on the viewpoint that was expressed uh, through uh, that was expressed by all these writers in their, in their background and the text. Uh, this is the first part of my dissertation, which tries to summarize uh, the background and the major text uh, of the 33 indigenous writers who are officially identified in Taiwan. By viewpoint, I mean the perception of the world around them. In the second part of my dissertation, um, I tried to compare this viewpoint with the viewpoint uh, which is expressed through the literary and the sociological reception of this indigenous written literature in Taiwan. The final part of my dissertation uh, is a, an annotated translation in French uh, of the last collection of short stories uh, written by Topaz Tamapima and uh, which was published in 1999. Its name is Memories of a Doctor on the Orchids Islands, and it uh, retraces uh, the experience of the author, author as a doctor on the Orchids Island at the end of the 80s. This translation helps to analyze the, the viewpoint of an indigenous writer in the integrality of one of his works. And um, so the aim of my research is to see what arises um, from, the, from the meeting of this multiplicity of different viewpoints. Okay. So the first time I met Topaz Tamapima was at the end of 2003. Um, the meeting with him was very fun and friendly. Um, I asked him some questions about uh, his background, uh, his childhood, uh, about uh, some novels uh, he wrote, and that uh, I had translated in French for my master's degree dissertation. Um, the second time I met him uh, was in 2011. Uh, it was still at his uh, dispensary uh, of Changbin uh, in Taidong. Uh, he didn't remember our first meeting, so it was very uh, frustrating for me. And um, I interviewed and filmed him for an hour. Uh, we had uh, a deep discussion about uh, everything, uh, about the indigenous literature, 
uh, about what he was thinking about the situation of Taiwan, of uh, the indigenous people among Taiwan, the Taiwanese society, uh, about his uh, political political point of view, uh, his experience as a doctor on the Orchid Island. The meeting with Monanen was a few weeks later in his massage room in Taipei. Uh, we talked about uh, his uh, background and his writings too. Um, in front of my camera, uh, he performed one of, of his most famous poems. Uh, its name is uh, When the Bells Start to Ring. And uh, it talks about the young indigenous women who become prostitutes. The meeting with him was really touching. To me, the, the Pacific is absolutely, absolutely, absolutely not at the heart of their writings. Uh, their writings were born around the lifting of the martial law. And um, I think at this, at this time, uh, Topas and Monanen were particularly concerned about the plight of the indigenous people. They mainly criticize the clash between the indigenous, indigenous cultures and the modern civilization which was imported by the Han people. They don't talk about the Pacific, maybe indirectly like in Memories of a Doctor on the Orchid's Island, uh, where Topaz uh, describes uh, the ocean culture of the Tao. Uh, this is the local people of the Orchid's Island. Uh, he he describes he also describes uh, the, the sea which surrounds the, the, the Orchid Island, but that's all, you know. <laughs> when the true uh, indigenous written literature in Mandarin started to appear uh, around the lifting of the martial law, I mean, uh, with uh, regular and homogeneous publications, not like the works of some indigenous writers like uh, Li Fo Koteng or Kowan Talal, uh, which were um, very underground and uh, or a bit sporadic and isolated before the 80s. At the beginning, this true indigenous written literature uh, was just another symptom of uh, identity and a cultural crisis uh, among Taiwan Aborigines. Although the idea to write uh, novels or poems by indigenous writers uh, was also promoted uh, at the beginning by some in, uh, Han writers or intellectuals. Um, the first indigenous texts in Mandarin were just a global reaction to the critical situation of Taiwan Aborigines. But during the 90s, uh, it's true that this literature began to be uh, institutionalized uh, with the creation of some specific literary prizes, uh, which were also organized by the Commission of Aboriginal Affairs in Taiwan. From this moment, uh, this literature began to be indirectly instrumentalized by the public authorities. And for example, if you analyze the posters which promote uh, these literary prizes, you can realize that one of their goals is to increase uh, the diversity of the Tai Taiwanese literature. So at the beginning, the indigenous written literature in Mandarin didn't belong to the Taiwanese literature, but it has been progressively included in it as another aspect of the literature of the island. It's difficult to say if the Taiwan indigenous written literature uh, fits in, into the idea of, of a common Pacific literature. Of course, some indigenous writers like uh, Siaman Rapongan uh, describe the Pacific. But I think, I mean, as far as I have progressed in my research, I think that the, the Taiwan indigenous written literature belongs more to a world indigenous literature than to a Pacific literature. You know, even if the contexts are very different, the contents of the Taiwan indigenous written literature are very similar uh, to the writings, uh, for example, of uh, some Native American writers, of uh, some Australian indigenous writers, who also criticize uh, the colonization, uh, the destruction of a modern civilization, over their original culture. Uh, 
the destitution of the tribe of that tribe um, some the social problems they encounter like alcoholism or poverty and uh, so in my opinion uh, the common point is more social than geographical in what we call the minorities literatures. <laughs>